1974, Central State University and its campus were changed forever. At 4.38 p.m. on Wednesday, April 3rd, a tornado destroyed over 80% of the campus, killing four people and injuring more than 20 others. The immediate recovery was quick. Classes resumed within days and graduation took place as scheduled in June. But it took more than a decade to recover from the devastation. That day, I sprained my ankle the day before and didn't want to go to school on crutches, so I stayed home that day. My father came home to, for lunch to see how I was doing, so I was the last one to see him. He was killed in the tornado in the post office here in Moore Forest. It was all night a uh, day of serenity, uh, very much like any other serene day, when all of a sudden the skies changed. Uh, we didn't have the kind of warning that we have uh, today. In the afternoon, there was a warning that a hard wind was on its way. And word got around that maybe we'd better close the university and alert everybody to get out of the way of this uh, storm that was coming. So that was an announcement sent out and people started leaving the campus. Lo and behold, before most people could leave the campus, that devastating tornado hit. The cost of the damage to the campus was more than $30 million. 13 buildings were destroyed and 29 buildings were damaged. Only 16 buildings remained standing and intact. When classes resumed that same month, all but an estimated 150 students returned to complete the term. Most of the older structures on campus, those built before or shortly after the turn of the century, were destroyed by the storm. And that was just utter destruction every place. One of the buildings, of course, that was very heavily hit was the university's library. Uh, a very beautiful structure, a two-story structure with a basement and our collection on the top floor it took the top of our library off, exposed all of our collection, including our archives uh, to the elements. The next morning when I came to the campus to survey the damage, I really was appalled. Our beautiful building, the front door you could not get in. The side windows had been blown out. Our materials had been flown to all parts of everywhere. We could not move up and down the steps. We had large collections of original paintings, artwork that we had on the wall. These simply had just disappeared. There was water uh, every place. There was no indication that this building had at any time been a library. Bundy, Arnett, and the Galloway Halls were damaged beyond repair and had to be demolished. The tower in Galloway Hall, however, was preserved, and today houses the CSU Foundation and Office of Alumni Affairs. Also lost that day were two Wilberforce homes on the National Register of Historic Places. Homewood Cottage, the former residence of Hallie Quinn Brown and the Scarborough House, the home of Central State University presidents and the former residence of William and Sarah Scarborough. Dr. Lionel H. Newsom, Central State University president from 1972 to 1985, led the recovery effort. Newsom, for whom the university's administration building is named, was a respected sociologist and a higher education administrator. During World War II, he enrolled as one of the first black candidates at the U.S. Army Training School, completing his service in Calcutta, India. As a young faculty member at Morehouse College in Atlanta, Newsom helped jailed civil rights protesters keep up with their college work and served as an administrator to the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, or SNCC. Before coming to Central State, he served as president of Barber Scotia College and Johnson C. Smith University. 
In 1965, Newsom was elected the 22nd General President of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity, an affiliation he shared with Charles H. Wesley and Martin Luther King Jr. Within days of the disaster, Ohio Governor John Gilligan and President Richard Nixon had toured the campus. Although initially supportive of rebuilding Central State, each man later expressed doubt in the need for the school's survival. Newsom's sharp reply drew national attention. In a public statement, Newsom said, either pay the cost now as an investment or later in destruction. We subsidize railroads, airplanes, every damn thing in the United States. And when we talk about a few more dollars to subsidize a black person, it's not realistic. As the university worked to recover from the tornado, assistance came from many directions. In the immediate aftermath, the Red Cross, area medical crews, and a military unit from Wright-Patterson Air Force Base were among the first to respond. Wilberforce and Cedarville universities provided student volunteers, housing, and food supplies. Interestingly enough, one of the side points of this whole tornado that came through that blew uh, items, uh, personal effects, hither and thither, that there were lots of instances where things were returned. Uh, somebody returned to us, for example, a group of letters that belonged to the archives. Fortunately, the letters themselves had been tied into a little bundle and they had blown someplace or another, so we had that collection of personal letters returned by an anonymous person. We never knew who sent them. They sent them back to us and we put them back in our archives. Universities throughout the state of Ohio, including Wright State University, offered books and other instructional materials. Miami University donated 160 trees. Some of the trees were planted in front of the campus, others stand prominently in the sunken garden and near the playing fields. Alumni across the country provided funds and other forms of support. The restoration of the sunken garden is one result of their efforts. Singer Nancy Wilson, a CSU alumna, performed two benefit concerts to raise money for the rebuilding of Central State University. The benefit sites were the Taft Theater in Cincinnati and the Music Hall in Cleveland. During the Cleveland concert, Miss Wilson was awarded an honorary doctorate degree in music. Classes resumed April 16th in the remaining buildings and makeshift structures. In June, the 1974 commencement ceremony proceeded as scheduled with Dr. Charles H. Wesley, former president of the university, delivering the commencement address to nearly 300 graduating seniors. That September, the university began the 1974-75 school year with 1,462 returning students and 330 new students. As a result of the extensive damage due to the strength of the F5 tornado, the Tawawa Woods offered a unique opportunity for the study of forest recovery. A portion of the woods was therefore officially designated a natural landmark by the Ohio Department of Natural Resources in 1990 for the purpose of such a study. The podcasts are a project of Central State University archivist Sheila Darrell and English professor Amy Hobbs Harris and funded by the Central State University Office of the President and Office of Sponsored Programs and Research. Visit the university website at centralstate.edu.